So if we take a battery and place that battery into an electric circuit, that battery will produce a special type of electric current that is commonly known as a direct current or simply DC. Now a direct current is essentially a current that consists of a steady unidirectional flow of electrons. So let's see exactly what that means by looking at the following diagram. So we have our closed electric circuit. We take a battery. We place that battery into our circuit as shown in the following diagram. So our electrons will always flow from the lower potential from the negative electrode to the higher potential to the positive electrode. They will always flow in a single direction. And that's exactly what we mean by unidirectional flow. They flow from the low potential to the high potential. Now steady simply means the electric current always has the same exact quantity, the same exact value. So if we plot on the x-axis the time and the y-axis our electric current, we see a steady value. We see a constant value as shown by the following constant slope. Now, on the other hand, the electric current that is generated at electric power plants is an alternating current or known as AC. Now, unlike a DC, unlike a direct current, an alternating current consists of electrons which oscillate back and forth over very short distances, as described in the following diagram. So let's suppose we have the following very long wire. Now, in this wire, we have electrons, and in AC, in alternating current, our electrons are oscillating back and forth. So this one oscillates and then that causes the next one to oscillate which causes this one to oscillate and so on and so forth. So each one oscillates as a result of an electric field as a result of a voltage difference. So for example, I think in the US the frequency of oscillation is about 60 hertz. So that basically means every electron oscillates 60 times every single second. So because our electron is capable of moving or oscillating in this direction and also in the opposite direction, we see that the electric current in alternating current reverses directions many times every single second. So if we take the xy axis once again and now we plot our curve, we have the y axis, our electric current and the uh, x axis is our time, we no longer get a constant slope. Now we have a sinusoidal curve. So why exactly is it sinusoidal? So it turns out that the voltage produced by an electric generator inside an electric power plant is sinusoidal and as a result of that our electric current is also sinusoidal. Now if we want to calculate the voltage that is produced by a electric generator at any given moment in time, we can use the following equation. The voltage at any given moment in time is equal to the peak voltage given by V0. This is simply the highest possible voltage value multiplied by sine of 2 pi frequency multiplied by T. Now 2 pi multiplied by the frequency is also known as our omega. So we see the voltage at any given moment in time is equal to V0 multiplied by sine of omega multiplied by T. So why exactly is the maximum voltage given by V0? Well, let's examine this sine term. So sine has a maximum value of positive 1 and a minimum value of negative 1. So sine of anything always ranges between negative 1 and positive 1. And that means if this is positive 1, then the highest value for the voltage is given by V0. And if this is negative 1, then the lowest voltage is given by negative V0. And that's known as the peak voltage. Now, let's try to determine the equation that will give us the electric current at any given moment in time. So we want to determine the equation for this curve as shown in the following diagram.
So recall the relationship between voltage and electric current. We knew, we saw by Ohm's law that the voltage is equal to the product of the electric current and our resistance, for example, resistance of that particular wire. So if we take this equation, rearrange it and solve for our I, we see the current is equal to voltage divided by R. Now the voltage is given by this equation. So let's take this equation and replace it and place it into our voltage. So we see the electric current is equal to V naught multiplied by sine of omega t divided by R. Now what exactly is V naught divided by R? Well, V naught divided by R is simply I naught. It's the peak electric current. Because V naught is equal to I naught multiplied by R, we can rearrange that and we get this equation. So now we can replace V naught divided by R with simply I naught. And we see, because of this equation and because of Ohm's law, we see our electric current at any given moment in time is given by I naught multiplied by sine of omega multiplied by t. So this is our equation of this curve. And once again, because sine ranges from negative 1 to positive 1, the highest possible value for i is given by i naught, and the lowest possible value for i is given by uh, negative naught. And these quantities, i naught and v naught, are known as peak voltage and peak current. So once again, V naught and I naught are known as peak voltage and peak electric current. Now, let's discuss power. So whenever an electric company supplies us with electricity, that basically means at the end of the month, they have to charge us for how much energy we used, for how much power we consumed, or our house consumed, or our business consumed, and so on and so forth. So they basically want to use the following equation. The power is equal to the product of the resistance of our wire, for example, and the square of our current. Now the problem is our current isn't steady like it is in DC. So in DC, we simply take our quantity of current multiplied by itself and multiplied by R and that gives us our power. But in this case, it's different because our I is not constant. It always varies as we see in the following diagram. So which I value should we use? Well, we can't use the highest peak value because that certain unfair. That means the companies would overcharge us and they don't want to overcharge us. So let's suppose they take the average of all these values. Well, if they take the average because this quantity has the positive value and these quantities have the same negative value, if they sum up all these values and then divide, that will give us zero. So that means they can't use the average value. So instead of using that, they define something known as root mean square electric current and root mean square voltage. So to find the root mean square electric current, we essentially take the square of all these values of all our values of i, and then we sum up all those squares, we divide by the total number, so we take the average of the squares, and then we take the square root. So we see that root mean square i is equal to the square root of the average of the squares as shown in the following equation. And that is equal to the peak current I naught divided by the square root of 2. And likewise, the same exact thing goes for our voltage. The voltage also varies just like our I does. And so that basically means the root mean square voltage is equal to the square root of our average of all the squares as shown. And this is equal to the peak voltage V naught divided by the square root of 2. So if they want to calculate the average power, the average power is equal to the product of our RMSI and the RMS voltage.